With the title of champion under your belt, you have a world to save. In the last video about Astara, I talked about Ostalonga's power of creating ultra wormholes for travel. And this was a secret tool we will use later. No, right now in this case, because with the legendary noodle entrusted to you, it's time to travel to the, the Ultra, Ultra Convergence. The Ultra Convergence initially was going to be a sort of dark world like in the Legend of Zelda games being a sort of opposite to Astara. But the idea of switching to this dangerous land of chaos seemed a little too much of the story for an early game thing, even maybe a mid-game. Instead, the Ultra Convergence does have similar ties to Astara. Well, at least the masses that you can explore. The Ultra Convergence itself is a pocket of space that seems to be a massive congregation of various islands floating around. The single large landmass, and in the direct center there is some sort of facility. But sadly it's a little difficult to get to at present time because where we have fallen is at the very edge of the island, in the middle of a raging storm. Much too dangerous to use the rotoplane in. Uh, seems like we're gonna have to walk it from here. The Convergence is a set of various large open worlds that act as sort of dungeons for the players, a final challenge to make the player use everything they've gotten over the course of their journey. Oh, and did I mention they're all quite large and beast paradoxified? Yeah, so this dungeon here, known as the Ultra Plains, would be you trying to avoid lightning strikes through timing, and the lightning rod ruins kind of attracting the bolts, a bit like the Final Fantasy X Thunder Plains. You'd also be combating Beast Paradox Pokemon running around here, it'd be a whole ordeal. More so than that, a new weather effect exclusive to the plane's Lightning Storm, which each turn has a 30% chance of calling down a bolt onto either Pokemon, raised to 50% if the Pokemon is a Steel type, or has the Lightning Rod ability. And Electric types are immune to it, but, you know, still get struck. Alright, without further ado, let's survive through this ordeal and meet some of the Beast Paradox denizens of this land. Let's first begin with a beast paradox that would be hunting around the plains and to form for one of the strongest Pokemon in history, Incineroar. This concept actually came from a design I did about a year before I started this channel. I kind of lightning rod me out and a new Evo for them. They weren't great, but I guess I like the idea enough to make a reference to it here in Incineroar. The idea here would be an almost yokai inspired Incineroar design that is kind of quadrupedal with a shocked look about it as if it literally has just been struck by a few too many lightning bolts in its time. It now ditches both fire and dark type for a normal and electric type. The planes here are called the planes for a reason. The Pokemon in the Ultra Convergence are built a bit different though, introducing a new ability for all of them, or should I say a new prefix for old abilities called Ultra Abilities. These are special abilities that do the same as their normal counterparts, but the kicker is that they can't be removed. Whether by abilities like Mummy or Neutralizing Gas or even switching back to their base forms. This means you could get Lightning Rod as a base Incineroar, which probably isn't what most people want as Intimidate is literally what it's known for, but it's an option if you want an Electric Immune special attacking regular Incineroar for some weird wild reason. <laughs> Incineroar, Beast Paradox form, the Shock Pokemon, a normal and electric type. The Ultra Plains are known for the storms that occasionally ravage it. Incineroar in their Beast Paradox form, as well as the ruins that litter the plains, are important for the survival of other Pokemon. While on its own, Incineroar is a skittish and quite calm Pokemon. Their power and aggression grow stronger when struck too many times. The hackles on their back is a good sign of when to keep your distance. Despite this, all researchers have lived peacefully with the Incineroar of the Plains, a two-star threat. Incineroar has the Ultra ability Ultra Lightning Rod. So it's the same as normal Lightning Rod, it just stays on regardless of what happens to Incineroar. Next let's talk about a new evolution. That's right, an Ultra Convergence only oh evolution. God. But who is the wow. wild, dangerous Pokemon getting a new evolution here? What's well, cast form of course. <laughs> This light here is the reason why the weather is so dangerous in the Ultra Convergence. The moment a cast form finds itself here, it evolves into our new Pokemon here, dubbed Disaster Form. I wanted to keep the general idea of the Teru Teru Bozu that cast form was inspired by, but make it look a little more like an older version. Is it just me or does cast form just give the biggest baby energy around? 
I had this idea in my head of an almost anti-hero-like look to disaster form, giving it this long, flowing bottom half that would work so well to show the wild weather as it flows about, as well as, I guess, a collar that hides his base form's mouth. Maybe it shuffles along as it talks. The little parts that I added around the collar would sort of work as a strange stand-in for hands as well. Zooming close enough and you could see thousands of tiny little fingers on there, I'm sure. Disaster Form doesn't have an Ultra ability, but it does have a new ability that plays upon Cast Storm's original ability for Cast. It transforms itself in the weather to create more powerful versions of the weather, increasing the Pokemon's specific stat-ups, as well as causing their damage from the weather to increase. You get to see the other forms of Disaster Form in their respective Ultra Convergence zones. Disaster Form, the wild weather Pokemon, a normal and dark type evolves from Castform while in the Ultra Convergence or when exposed to an Ultra Stone. Castform that find their way into the Ultra Convergence quickly adapt to the wild weather conditions of each biome. This rapidly evolves Castform into its disastrous evolution. It revels in the powerful conditions transforming to suit the wild weather it's experiencing. What's worse is that the weather gets worse due to Disaster's powers, making wandering, powerful storms are normal in the Ultra Convergence. Free Star Threat. Disaster Storm has a new ability called Weather Warning, where it changes form depending on the weather and powers up the weather when it transforms as well. Hey, is it uh, alright if I Monster Hunter in here? Yeah, thanks. Ah, oh, that's the good stuff. Next up is a beast form of slacking. Now, obviously the biggest difficulty with our big sleepy over here was its ability. I could not do it dirty and give it an ultra truant ability, but I think I gave it a sort of good middle ground for it being a Monster Hunter reference. I wanted to make slacking into this weird gorilla-esque fanged beast, a weird creature that would fit in well in ultra space, and so the idea was set for a more upright slacking, giving a big alien King Kong vibe and replacing his normal type with the dragon type, which again, I know is scary, but it now has a new ability called Weakened State, a callback to the idea of in Monster Hunter the monster limping home all sad and defeated when on low health. For Beast Paradox slacking here, it comes in the form of its stats lowering equal to its HP. Super strong at high HP, but super weak at low HP. Able to probably get some good hits in before fainting. This slacking would sort of be a mid-dungeon encounter boss that you'd have to get through to continue. Maybe it's even seen in the same pose as slacking, but the moment it sees anything, it jumps up and dashes over to it and does that thing the Hulk does all the time now. <coughs> slacking, Beast Paradox form, the fanged beast Pokemon, a dragon type. In Ultra Space, slacking could no longer laze around and instead took on a more active role, slowly becoming an apex predator of the Ultra Planes. It is constantly exerting energy, causing their head to become a rosy red and steam to pour off the Pokemon. After too long or becoming too weak from battling, it returns to a partially dormant state. Be wary while walking through the Ultra Plains. Slacking will launch pillars of rock from miles away towards anything it deems a threat. 5 Star Threat Slacking has a new ability called Weakened State, where its stats lower equal to the Pokemon's hit points. I thought it'd be fitting to include a couple of Astaramons in here for good measure, and one of my faves I felt deserved it, and that's Valkyrie. Head to her debut video if you haven't met this star. But Valkyrie was one that I had in mind because initially Valkyrie was going to be a moth-like creature in Astara, very early on. So this is kind of another callback. It was kind of easy to adapt it to this form because of the fluffiness of the original, as well as the vaguely mothman-like body shape it has. In terms of sort of sizing in the Ultra Convergence, these Pokemon are more of the smallest ones, being smaller than most fully grown adults. It goes to show that some Pokemon actually get smaller in beast form to sort of adapt to help it avoid predators. Having Bug Steel type means that the lightning could be rather deadly to it unless it hides out when the storms are raging, and is probably the best example of a friendlier and to quote Monster Hunter again, herbivorous fodder creature. <laughs> Valkyrie, Beast Paradox form, the Moth Pokemon, a Steel and Bug type. While smaller than their star and forms, this form of Valkyrie is no less powerful. They employ their speed and power to avoid the larger predators of the Ultra Plains and take refuge within large pillars from ruins as their homes. The small scales that fly off their mate have a hallucinogenic property, 
while only falling off in small amounts when idle. If threatened, they'll wildly shake themselves and unleash a cloud of it. Friendly and playful, it is the kindest Pokemon of the plains. Valkyrie has the Levitate ability in its Ultra form, meaning it can't be removed. I needed something a bit more alien in the Ultra Plains, so I set my sights on Ursa Ring. And what better than to turn it into a squishy and incredibly hardy water bear mixed with a bit of gummy bear. The idea would be a very alien sort of Ursa Ring face, feeling very much like my water starter Regibranx's face, and here attached to the rolly, pillowy bodies of a water bear. It still has Ursa Rings by pedal nature before it becomes Ursa Luna. But it now gets another pair of arms for what I could guess is swimming along in any water that actually shows up in the plains. It's incredibly slow, even when it employs these extra arms, so it almost waddle along like some kind of toddler for the most part, just being a generally scary looking gummy bear from a distance. Typing was hard, but I eventually settled for bug water typing here. It could have also had normal type or even steel type thanks to its hardy nature. I gave it the Ultra Overcoat ability as well. In this case, Overcoat would also protect from the lightning storms on the plains. Don't want this gummy bear melting now, do we? <laughs> Ursa Ring, Beast Paradox form, the hardy Pokemon, a bug and water type. A curious adaptation due to the Ultra Radiation and a need to survive the wild weather, Ursa Ring has taken on a rubbery, hardy body that seemingly is capable of protecting itself against almost anything. Ursa Ring's body is so soft and rubbery that even a giant rock pillar hurled from a slacking does nothing to it, not even a scratch. They have a bit of a territorial and mean streak, however. Multiple Ursa Rings usually aren't seen though, so when you see one of these Pokemon, run fast and you should be okay. Free Star Fret. Ursa Ring has the Ultra Overcoat ability. Tangrowth and Tangler are two Pokemon I've come to recently enjoy quite a bit, so I thought it'd be fun to give them a new Beast Paradox form. Unlike the other Pokemon here, Tangrowth adapted to the actual area close to the center mass and then sort of propagated outwards. It has now become this tangling mass of wires and other junk seemingly amalgamated to the body of it here and given life. Just as the ultra radiation has caused Pokemon in this world to take on Beast Paradox forms, Mankind itself has also influenced the direction of a few Pokemon here. I thought it'd be fun to have this sort of massive Pokemon. The hollows of the wires containing little eyes and may or may not be some form of tangler. Whether or not it's normal or beast paradox, you'll never know. I love the idea of this thing sort of driving around on its little bike wheels, all the wires just flying wildly behind it. it. Gives me sort of an alternate future paradox form that's a bit more messed up. The scientists who are making this one goofed up a little bit here. Tangrowth, Beast Paradox form, the Metal Mess Pokemon, a Steel and Electric type. This form of Tangrowth never initially existed till Hibiscus Labs set up in the center of the Ultra Convergence. Rumor has it that a Tangrowth test subject was unleashed and didn't want to leave the outskirts of the labs, and adapted and amalgamated with the surrounding junk technology. Its body is made up of many wires, some of them containing other Pokemon living within the hollows. Some still have electricity within them, if a foe attacks Tangrowth, they get wrapped up in wires and shocked, unable to move. Tangrowth has a new ability called Tangled Mess, where physical attacks against this Pokemon can slow or paralyze the attacker. So by going through the dungeon, you are met with one final challenge, a giant chasm blocking the way to get to the center mass. Oh, and a legendary Beast Paradox Pokemon you have to try and fight. That's probably the main problem right now, isn't it? My four seasonal Pokemon Orm, Tori, Wintravel, Summerel, and Sprint Sage are still designs I think slap, even if they are a bit disconnected to the region at large, but I thought wouldn't it be cool if there were sort of final bosses standing in the way of your progress for the Ultra Convergence? The form standing before you isn't that of Sprint Sage, but it has a bit of a different look to it. Something very draconic. Each of the four seasons now have a bit of a Tears of the Kingdom influence to them, as they are all now a form of dragon in some way or another. Instead of a bison-like creature that Spring Sage once was, it's now sort of a Kirin-like dragon. Again, a bit of a Monster Hunter-inspired design here, but I really like the idea of this sort of contradictory design here. While Spring Sage is large in silhouette, very stout, here it becomes more slender and much taller. The boss battle here would be in a field of flowers, seemingly unfazed by the lightning surrounding it. 
Sprint Sage would be backed up by Beast Paradox of Alcarine. His fairy type moves would be boosted by Sprint Sage's ability here. Normal Pokemon battle as well, we're saving the action battles for later here. If it wasn't obvious, each of the four season Beast Paradox forms have the Dragon type as well as abilities that boost the power of their respective primary types. Spring Sage, Beast Paradox form, the Spring Dragon Pokemon, a Fairy and Dragon type. The Protector of the Ultra Plains, this form of Spring Sage is a unique form that proves the existence of multiple Spring Sage and that the Ultra Convergence has its own seasons. Wherever it treads, beautiful flowers bloom. From research conducted, these flowers give life and power to other Pokemon. These flowers are strange and quite alien to match the Ultra Convergence. It has a protective nature and will battle anyone that dares throw off the balance of the Ultra Plains. Spring Sage has a new ability called Spring Force, which boosts the power of fairy type moves for this Pokemon and their allies. Although not able to catch this Spring Sage yet, Upon defeat, it uses its powers oh, to create no, a bridge I'm of flowers here. and vines across to the center mass, and Spring Sage returns to the dungeon for you to catch later. The center mass of the Convergence acts as a small open world hub, where a small taster of Pokemon you'd find in each area could be caught, and where you leave off towards each of the other dungeons. The large lab in the middle reveals itself as Hibiscus Labs, but it's in lockdown till each of the four seasons have been bested, and one other secret boss. So where shall we go next? Comment down below whether you'd like to go to the Ultra Snowfields, Ultra Forest, Ultra Basin, or the Ultra Volcano first. So what did you think of the first area of the Ultra Convergence? Comment where you want to go next as well as your thoughts on the Pokemon in the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as well as hit the bell to never miss a video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.